cut to the chase. What I see here, whether it's your shop, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, all of them, is I can make alpha with ESG. True? Actually, we believe it is true. Now, it ties into what you just said about data. And uh, as you and I both I know. I agree. Data we, discipline. Data discipline. We've both written pieces on LinkedIn. My latest one was about ESG and data. This will be the year, I think, Catalyst, maybe Davos and the other work that's being done, to get data to the right place to help us drive alpha. Some examples, because examples please, are key. Please, yes. If you think about data driving alpha, Data has shown that diverse boards drive better governance and have driven better results. Did you write the memo for Solomon on this where Goldman Sachs says a woman has to be a... Why one woman? Why, why one woman? Help me here. <laughs> what is it about one woman on a board? Are you kidding? Go with three. First of all, David leads from the front. So okay. he's been, he has been the person driving many of these initiatives. I can say from an asset management perspective, we actually have been voting our proxies uh, against companies, even before ISS recommended it, that haven't focused on a diverse board. One, two, the point is the change. The point is we see the value and we see making this statement as an asset manager in the way we vote our proxies, David's stance on behalf of the entire firm, as one example of where we're not just doing this because it's good, we're doing it because we think it adds value to shareholders and stakeholders. Uh, there are other examples. If you think about climate change, which clearly has been the huge topic, there are many ways in which the economics of climate change can affect our investments mm -hmm. and our investors. They're worried about stranded sure. assets. I, uh, one thing is for I do want to mention, folks, and I've got a modest interest in this, and I mean modest here. Vetbill's taking all the money. American Water Works is a small company in New Jersey. It's a wonderful water company. And that's an example of where not just large cap, fat and happy people in Davos, but mid cap and small cap companies can do ESG with a vengeance. Do you observe that at Goldman Sachs Asset Management, where it's not just about the 12 companies here, big, fat, and happy, but it's moving down the capitalization structure where ESG is embedded? I absolutely agree with that philosophically. It's important to us when we think about environmental impact. That's the space we're looking in. And I'll give you another example. We wrote an extremely important piece, I think, on carbonomics as a firm. Less than 1% of the investment into renewables has gone into carbon sequestration and carbon capture. Yet that's one of the number one things if anybody wants a net zero future. This is an investment opportunity, and it's small and mid-cap yeah. companies that lead innovation. Innovation is key to solving these issues. Usually what we do with Grace here, folks, is leave other firms out of it with a good conversation with Goldman Sachs. It's Friday. Let's break the rules. <laughs> There's a guy in the valley, Larry, uh, Larry Fink. He works for a small shop up the street. He put out a couple things on this. How do you assist your good competitor in embedding this methodology, this ex the tactics of what you're doing into the mainstream of asset management? Well, I think the question of ESG and particularly climate change, but many other issues, inclusive growth, are ones where firms like Larry's, ourselves, many others are in a common agreement and can work towards common goals. What kind of things can we do? We can help drive the standards on data that will help us evaluate mm -hmm. companies, and then we apply our own investment discipline. We can join in organizations like One Planet, which is a partnership of asset managers and sovereign wealth funds, including ourselves and BlackRock, that are working towards real investment opportunities in the areas such as you suggested, particularly innovative companies driving change. Okay, I, I want to talk about worst practices. I think of Bill Priest and the people at Epic Investments. They're brilliant on here's free cash flow, and here are some of the ways to avoid mistakes in free cash flow. This is so new in ESG. Have you even discovered what the bad paths are, what the mistakes are in analyzing towards successful ESG? What do you try to avoid in the rage of ESG? Well, you know, it's a great question. I had I only an, get one today, so go with not it. Not true. I, I, I had a, a conversation, actually. I have an anecdote for you on that with, a, with an investor in, uh, in Scandinavia who was talking to us about our quantitative work on ESG. And what I was explaining is, here are the six factors we've found. These are interesting, et cetera. Where are the others? How long have we been working? We are eliminating 100 factors to find a few that work. And I think that will be the exercise of ESG as we get more data. As you look at uh, a multiple, multitude of things that companies are telling you, mm -hmm. is there a standard for what they're telling you about their carbon footprint? 
Is there a standard for what they're yeah. telling you about the ways in which they have inclusive growth embedded into their companies and how their yeah. employees feel? There really isn't. I got to switch gears. I need one more question with Sheila Patel. It's so important for Global Law Street. We got to go there very quickly here. Are we going to compete the profits out of asset management? Is there so much money and so many people that want to compete with Goldman Sachs asset management that everybody's margins come down? I actually don't think so. I think that uh, one of the things that really helps us is the ability to implement technology in our own businesses, both from the efficiency we can now okay. offer to clients and from the efficiency okay. of finding ideas.